<laughs> okay. Hi. It's me, Courtney. I'm back again. I just, uh, I had some things on my mind uh, about uh, my book. Um, because a friend of mine uh, that I, well, a guy that I went to high school with sent me a message to tell me congratulations about my book. And uh, I was really flattered. And uh, he asked, would it be something that I'd be interested in checking out reading-wise? And in the back of my head, I'm thinking, oh, dear God. Um, I told him that it was mostly romance, but I had ideas for other stories that were going to be like thrillers and maybe horror and stuff like that for the future. And, you know, he said, well, good luck with it. So, am I alienating potential readers because I wrote a romance novel? I don't feel like I have. Now, I've seen that some readers of Stephanie Meyer's Twilight Saga um, are men. Uh, you know, I won't name names because uh, everybody has their own opinions about what celebrities they like and celebrities they don't like, and things they like, and things that they don't like. Um, yes, predominantly, Heart Song is a romance novel. Why is it a romance novel? Because apparently that's what I'm good at writing. When I first started writing, when I was about 13, I wrote, like, a short story that won a scary story contest because it was around Halloween. And it was kind of, I guess, R.L. Stein-like. Kind of more like the, the Fear Streets, but it wasn't as, you know, probably gruesome as some of them are. So basically, it was more like an R.L. Stein, you know, Fear Street novel, but it wasn't like the gorier ones, like the chillers and like the Fear Street sagas that got like a little bit bloodier, but that's kind of what it was. Because when I was younger, I kind of wanted to be, you know, R.L. Stein, Carolyn Cooney. I wanted to write like point horror books, but I realized I kind of sucked at it uh, because Eventually, we started, you know, learning about poems and poetry, and I found that I was really good at writing romance poetry and stuff like that, and, you know, all middle school, high school girls have crushes. That's mostly what mine were about, crushes on boys and uh, celebrities that I had crushes on, uh, and, you know... I found out I was really good at that. So, I don't know how long it was before I decided to get, like, really romantic with my writing. But, um, I do know one thing. My mom used to read the romance novels, you know, the ones that had kind of, like, Fabio on the cover. And I think I remember saying to my mom... One time, oh my god, mom, how can you read this stuff? It's so, it's cheesy, and people make fun of it. And now I'm a hypocrite because I write romance. You know, I'm not envisioning, like, Fabio when I write it. But it's, it's romance. That's what it is. Oh. And, uh, kind of, like I said, I tried to do a horror thing. It didn't work. Oh. And when I got a little bit older, uh, you know, of course, I went to you know, the library and we had Stephen King books, but they had all the book jackets taken off of them. Huh? So you just had like a regular hardback book with no book jacket. 
you know, like you couldn't see the cover art. Almost half the Stephen King books had no cover art on them. So you would just have to just look at the spine and see what the title was. So I'd read Stephen King and realize, yeah, I can't, I can't do horror like this. But I can do horror with a little bit of romantic elements. And then, uh, I don't know. I don't know exactly how old I was, but I think I, I know it was downtown one time walking through the, like, thrift shops and stuff with my, my sister, and I found, um, a copy of Interview with the Vampire by Anne Rice, and I read that, and it's like, you know, I like, I like these novels. I like them. I like vampires, so. I like all kinds of vampires. I like Anne vampires. I like Twilight vampires. I like vampires. But I realize, you know, I could kind of write a little more like this. Kind of a little bit more, um, prosy, I guess you want to call it. Um, everybody knows what purple prose is. Just over, over describing stuff to, like, the maximum level. But... I realized, hey, maybe I could do this a little bit. Like I said, romance with horror elements. Maybe not even horror, maybe like supernatural, paranormal, thriller kind of books. Um, so, because that really got me thinking after I got this message from, you know, this person that I went to high school with. And I was thinking, did I alienate men because I wrote a romance novel? I mean, because I still have my book here. I, I keep it here. Um, I guess, kind of, inspiration-wise. It's pink on the front. Um, as I stated before, I can't draw. I can't even draw, like, stick people very well. Well, I can draw, but kind of more inanimate objects, cartoonish stuff. I can't draw people. So that's the main thing. I can't draw people like on the those Fabio romance novels, you know. I I can't draw that. So this was kind of a art paper design. Because I just chose something kind of more abstract that was just, you know, not a person, not a thing. Because I couldn't find anything in the images that they provided for uh, just creating your cover. And it's like, hey, we have images you can use. But I couldn't find one of people or anything romancy enough for it. So I just chose this art paper because I liked it. And uh, um, pink's actually one of my favorite colors. Uh, which is ironic because when I was younger I didn't like pink. Uh, but uh, I like the pink paper. And I kind of thought, you know, it kind of looks like maybe the wall of the muscle inside the human heart. Oh. Because, you know, they didn't even have anything remotely what I was looking for. So, you know, it's... I like it. You know, did I alienate, you know, male readers because it's pink? Possibly, yes. <laughs> But, um, so, um, because I keep asking my husband if maybe he will get on Twitter and, you know, mention that I have a book. Um, I know a lot of people who probably follow him are men. And, well, his main response when I asked him that was, well, I'm not going to advertise it if I don't know if it's good yet or not. I need to see reviews. And I tried to tell him, um honey, I'm not going to get any reviews on the book if nobody knows it's out there to read. And I told him, I told, you know, I, I put it on my Facebook, I put it on my Twitter, I've got like almost 600 friends on Facebook, and, you know, um, I didn't, I didn't send uh, invitations to the Facebook page I created for my book to a lot of them, um, you know, because... I guess I was thinking in my head, still, well, men aren't going to read it because it's a romance novel. Oh. And then some people I didn't send it to because 
some of them are actually, you know, well-known people, you know, um, I call them, like, my famous Facebook friends, uh, and I didn't want to try to be like, I was, like, pandering to, like, get people to read my book. That's another thing, I don't, you know, I'm not trying to force people to read it, but I know I have a copy, my mom has a copy, and I found out that my mother-in-law has a copy of my book. So, predominantly, so far, women, uh, and people related to me, uh, so, um, it just would be nice to have somebody who's not related to me read it. I mean, you know, like I said, you know, you don't have to be like, oh, this book is amazing, you're a great writer, and blah, 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 blah. Alright, I don't think I'm a great writer, but I know that I am a good writer, because if I wasn't, I never would have won that short story contest when I was younger. But then again, like I said, my writing's been kind of lax lately because, well, I guess the main example would be my blog. I do have a blog. Um, I mostly talk about movies and books. Mostly I've been talking about the Fear Street series. And uh, I guess I kind of got in my head that, why are you even writing a blog that nobody probably reads? My husband said that's why he kind of stopped blogging. A long time ago, but he'd, he'd talk about like IndyCar and Formula One racing and NASCAR and stuff like that. He said he kind of stopped doing it because he didn't think anybody read it. So there's no reason to write if nobody's going to read it. Um, but yeah, that got me thinking. And because, uh, of course, my husband <laughs> won't read my book because it's a romance novel. And my husband's not really a reader like I am. Um, he does have books, so, yeah, my husband can read, uh, he's, he's very intelligent, he can read, but he's not a reader like I am. I've got tons of books back there, I've read half of them like 15,000 times where the covers are falling off and pages are coming unglued and, you know, but I thought about that and, uh, maybe I've been kind of mislabeling my book as just being pure romance. Uh, there is romance in it. Again, I also wrote it at a time when I was just starting my relationship with my husband, and we had a long-distance relationship. I didn't get to see him a lot. You know, it was like, I guess like our, both of our second most significant relationships. So, you know, I was in love. I didn't get to see him a lot. So, I write ideas and, you know, but before I even met him, I had this story planned out to write. I actually wrote a version of it before and it got, um, I don't know, something happened to it. So I had to rewrite it again. Uh, and when I rewrote it the second time, I was in a relationship with my husband. Uh, so it was still the same, but it was different. Uh, because it came from a different place. Uh, first one I'd written it when I wasn't in a relationship and the second time I had to rewrite it, I was. Uh, so that's basically why it's a romance. But it's not just about a man and a woman being in love with each other. It talks about the love they have for their family. Uh, their family is, you know, their children and themselves but um, they're in a rock band, uh, and their band is their family, too. You know, they're like brothers and sisters, uh, and, you know, it talks about family dynamics of, you know, you know, losing your parents when you're young, losing your parents tragically. That's the backstory of my two main characters. They've, you know, grown up different, in different families, being raised by, I guess, a single father figure, and then, you know, that's my heroine of the story, and then my hero, he's led, uh, he's led a good life with loving parents, and then they die suddenly in a car accident way before the story starts, 
And that's how most romance novels start. The hero's missing something in his life and, you know, boy meets girl and they have things in common. And their relationship strengthens the relationships they have outside with their friends and the people around them. So it's not just, you know, savvy romance and I kind of, I guess, maybe lost that in the shuffle because predominantly when people are going to read it after, I guess, when by the time it gets to like the end of the first chapter, beginning towards the second, it turns more, you know, romantic. But, you know, you know, that's why the title of it is called Heart Song. I don't care what anybody else says about why it's titled that. It comes from the heart. It comes from my heart around the time being in love. And like I said, I took a lot of time with the characters thinking about who they were, how they'd act, what they'd have to face. And, you know, that's, that's what it is. It's, it's from the heart. And it's not just romantic, you know, romance that guys are going to think about, that it's all gushy and mushy. Well, it is that, but um, love's different for lots of people. Some people are romantics, and some people don't like fluff. Oh, I mean, I can't tell you to be romantic. I can't be like, guys, you should be more romantic to your wives, or uh, be nicer to your girlfriends, or, you know, try to be over-romantic. I mean, if they love you, they love you for who you are, and they should accept your faults. So, I don't know, but just after I got that message, it really bothered me, like maybe I was, I don't know, trying to market it all wrong. Because, um eventually stories that I want to write with these characters in the future, they're going to come across, you know, kind of more supernatural kinds of things. I have stuff like involving vampires and werewolves and, uh, you know, other stuff coming along. But, you know, there's going to be romance in it because that's, it's what I'm good at. And it's just the kind of niche that I've fallen into with my writing. I, um, I don't know, it was just really bothering me, and, uh, I just kind of wanted to get it off my chest, so, um, I just, I just think people should, you know, give things a chance, huh? I mean, um, respect, I guess, is kind of what I'm trying to get more at. Because, I mean, you can tell somebody that you wrote a book and they'll be like, oh, well, good for you. It's like, good for you. You wrote a book. Like, they're patting you on the shoulder, patting you on the hand, like, oh, well, good for you. You wrote a book. Uh, I'm happy for you. Uh, and then, you know, people will be like, oh, my God, you wrote a book? I'm definitely going to read it. You know, you can't tell if people are going to lie to your face or not about it, but um, I just hope that I explained, I explained it a little bit better than I did before about what this book is about. I just, I guess I kind of want people to read it so they can tell me if they like it. And then I can tell my husband, well, somebody actually read my book, and this is what they think about it. And, you know, because it's just, I don't know. Maybe I feel like I need, I need vindication to know whether I'm a good writer or not. Because, you know, like I said, 
I don't have money to promote this book. I can't, I can't even hire anybody to promote it for me. So word of mouth is all I've got. And that's what I need to hear from all of you out there. If you like my book or not. And uh, I just think you should read it to give it a chance. I know I may sound annoying and, and repetitive, trying not to be, and also I'm, I'm like really nervous trying to talk about this um, and not seem like I'm being bitchy or or like I, I'm trying to get like pity or something. It's just how I feel, and um, I guess um, we'll just see how things go, and um, See what happens in the future.